What is good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Fox's Den. Getting into another reaction, another episode of Ninja Kamui, episode 9. I'm gonna be honest, the past couple episodes have been kind of lackluster. We've been getting a little bit of info in here and there, and I have been fucking with the new concept of the mechs a little bit, but it also kind of threw me off when I first, like, when they were first introduced, I guess, because the first couple episodes, like, especially with Higan going off and defending his family as best he could, and then also, like, you know, going down the path of seeking revenge within the first and second episode, I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be a fucking lit-ass show about ninjas, which it still is. But the mechs definitely threw me for a loop at first when I first saw them. I was like, okay, interesting. This is ninjas, but also now there's mechs involved. It's kind of interesting, kind of weird, kind of this, kind of that. But I've been fucking with it so far. But the past couple episodes have been just mainly like info, trying to figure out what Yamaji's true goal is in all this, or I guess combined with Alza, and they're just basically trying to gain control over everything which is not really surprising, kind of a classic trope or uh, direction that some stories go in. Uh, I don't know if there's something deeper than that. Maybe we'll find out this episode or, you know, as the episodes continue to come out up until the last episode 12, because we got this one, 10, 11, 12. So we got four more, including this one. And then the first season is over or first core, I guess you would say. It's been interesting thus far, but I was definitely way more locked in when we first started. I mean, that first episode was a fucking banger. And then as we've gotten farther and farther in, like especially the past couple weeks, these past couple episodes, like with the mechs and everything, it's been kind of, it's been kind of weird, like learning about all of this all at once. And then also just the idea of the mechs combined with ninjas is kind of, I didn't see that coming. And um, I definitely wouldn't mind it, it just being ninjas. Like, I, I mean, he got soup is suit, like his ghost, Gosuku, I think they call it, is dope as fuck. The design is amazing. But uh, I want to see some more like just hand to hand combat and get the fuck in this shit and, 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 you know, hopefully get some more action coming up because it's been a couple episodes and we had, you know, some of that and uh, I'm itching for more. So off the last episode, we've met up with Mike and the other guy that, you know, for Mike had ha hacked into Alza systems the first time and then kind of like blew his cover of where he was staying at in our arcade or whatever. So we've met up with them. Gang's back together. He gone. Emma, Mike and the other guy i can't remember his name at the moment but they're all together they're trying to figure out the next move they're sharing information or at least giving more information that emma and Higan have already found out to mike and the other guy and obviously mike had to deal with the knowledge learning about emma's true identity or you know like her true role in all of this and, and her being a part of like a spy in Alza and then also a ninja and you know it was a lot of information for him to take in all at once but they they, they settled their you know uh grievances or whatever and you know came to an understanding like you know you, you wouldn't have done it if you weren't passionate about this and like felt like you had to and there's definitely something pushing you forward and then he showed what is pushing him forward which is that you know drawing or note that his daughter left him which is pretty much the last thing he you know he holds dear to him uh that is the closest thing that shows that connection between him and his daughter that you know she was truly alive and, and it was once a reality and he has to live with you know him working himself to the bone and not really paying attention to his family and not being there for like when something tragic like that happened so they both have their goals in life and, and their aspirations and what and what is pushing them forward to continue to, to, to work hard and, and find out what they're trying to find out so it's cool to see them get back uh, uh, into a decent relationship with each other. And then now they're sharing information and we're trying to figure out our next move on how we're going to get the fuck back into the city, what their next move is. Because I think they were trying last episode to get to somewhere to supercharge Higan's suit so he doesn't have to worry about recharging it constantly, which I think they already did the Big D suit. And that's how they got into that fight between Big D and Higan and Emma. And uh, I, he, he pretty much drove them away where they couldn't get what they wanted to accomplish done. So hopefully they figure out some way to do that this episode and we get some more knowledge maybe of what uh, Yamaji's goals are and Alza in general and uh, see our next move and trying to get into the city and accomplishing what we want to do. So I'm excited to get into this episode. Let's get into it. If you guys enjoy it, please like down below, comment, subscribe for new, hit the notification bell so the next one's dropping. Let's get into it. Ninja Kamui episode nine. Really? <laughs> 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 <la
現在稼働している発電所を回り施設を無効化した上でこちらが使用するエネルギーを奪いますだからそれは忍びの存在を明らかにするっていうことだうんうん分かってる He's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna keep doing what I gotta do. Hey, man, it's a key not in the duck no goto, he don't take him the noga. Huh? It's all you or in the tongue. What? <laughs> How did you come to that conclusion just because he knows his real name or his name that he was given as a ninja? Oh, is that a tracker on their truck? Well, they are, they're gonna know exactly where they're at at all times then. Man. All right, we'll see how this plays out, I guess. All right, let's get into this shit. Come on, what the fuck are we doing? Trying to go to the power plants, shut them down while getting their energy at the same time to be allowed us to do what we can do. Are they talking about how he gave permission Reaper to go take care of he gone? Alright, Zuckerberg, calm the fuck down. <laughs> Simulation, interesting. Then why are you partnered with him? Oh, that's a hologram. Oh, okay. He wasn't even actually there. Is that that bird? Okay, yeah, that crow is connected to Reaper, so Reaper's always paying attention to like Yamaji and shit. Like he's literally Yamaji's right hand man. マリソンだと思えばいい。自信がない。いつも怒らせていた。とりあえず具足ギアの運用と<笑><笑><笑> Okay. That's his name, Jason. Okay, all right, good to remember. <laughs> Damn, he a good cook or some shit? Okay. <laughs> he sees all these meetings as a hassle. He wants to get back to playing his game. Damn! Chill, Zuckerberg. Holy fuck! <laughs> He's passionate. His daily fade. <laughs> this is my time, baby. Okay, so he's the one that's tracking the truck. Are they like in a relationship or something? Seemed kind of sentimental. Is he going to get his suit? That's Big D's gear. So that's his suit. That shit looks pretty crazy too. 
probably seen him go all out though. Jason and Emma, the hackers of the group. <laughs> you touch my work, bitch, I'm gonna hack into it. <laughs> Even better than they were yesterday. He gets a, he gets a fade every day. This shit is pristine. His hair is always pristine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got here quick. Yeah, those centipedes are his arms. Or, his, or at least his suit's arms. The president's gonna have a heart attack. Oh shit, here we go. He gone versus Big D, round two. Damn, he handled that pretty quickly. Oh, but they can just reconnect. That's wild as fuck. <laughs> they get so quiet. Yo, Jason is so fucking sarcastic. Oh shit, they got fucking soldiers here too? Bro, everybody pulling up. Oh wow. There it is. You just had to mention that? Oh, okay, there we go. Good shit. Bro, he got a Gatling gun? Oh! <laughs> Yo, careful, Mike. God damn. Those guns pointed to you fast. Mmm, there we go. Looks like those blades almost like turning into sh yeah shuriken. Oh! Here we go. Good distraction. Go ahead, Emma. Oh! Merciless. This is what I'm fucking talking about. Careful, bud. Fucking sniper on the roof. No way that actually hit him. After I'm finished, he he's willing to he's been hell bent on sacrificing himself as need be, and that's what he sees that is probably gonna happen. Oh, he's got a vest on. Okay, good. Oh, charging it! He still got that Gatling on, just hanging from him, bro. Yo, like what? My God, be strong as shit. Ooh, nah, that was nasty. Kunai into the frag grenade, took out the sniper. There he goes, finally using that shit. Damn, clean. Oh, oh, oh yo, Emma's a sharpshooter, bro. Ah, oh, fuck. There we go. Good cover fire, that's what I'm talking about. All right, come on, he gone. We gotta take this motherfucker down. Oh, yep. Good fucking hit, bro. He should be done. <laughs> He's loving it. He's perfectly satisfied with dying like that. Damn. That was a lot quicker than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Jason's just in the car. You're like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Oh, he's trying to self-destruct the suit. Back the fuck up! Get out of there, bruh! Oh, now it's trapping you? The centipede? Oh, great. Here we fucking go. Wow, protecting Mike, of course, as usual. Oh, nah, bruh. 
Nah, that's a huge explosion. What the fuck? That's like a little nuke. God damn it, bro. So Emma's finally actually dead this time. Thought she was already dead a couple episodes ago, but she fucking ends up. Bro, how do you? How can you do that, bro? Was that Big D? Turn to ashes. Look at all the burns all over her body. Oh my god, that's fucking terrible. And that's kind of symbolic to what she already went through as a kid, because she had she has those burns on her face. Yeah, it's gonna show her real face. Her actual hair too. Looks like her actual hair color is black. That song that he was singing in karaoke that one night. Okay, this was a wild fucking episode, bro. God damn, is she really gonna die this time? And they're making it seem like it. Like, they're not holding back this time. Unless it's gonna cliffhang us again. We're gonna see what the fuck happens. Oh, that's her as a kid. Wow. I'm so lucky, baby. Cause you are my girlfriend. Yo, Mike, I'm sorry, bro. You gotta retire, dog. You gotta retire. Hey, they had a great night, though. They are having fun. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter if you're bad at it as long as you're having fun. Damn, bro. If my daughter was still alive, wow, man. Another chance with my daughter. Damn, that's crazy. And now she's gone, too. That's sad as fuck, bro. Yeah, look at Jason. Like, yeah, come on, bro. Like, damn. Damn. That's so fucking sad. Well, Jason's gonna have to take the lead now on the fucking truck and, and fucking all the hacking shit, getting them into the city, all this kind of stuff. Yep, this is strengthening his resolve even more because of how close Emma was to Mary. Just like the first episode when he burned down his own house. It's time to heat shit up, I agree. It's time to put an end to this shit. Reaper suit is ready too. Oh fuck, baby, we gonna get Reaper versus he gone very soon. That might be the climax. That might be like the end of the season with that fight type shit. Is that it? Damn, bro, that was a good fucking episode. That was a good one. That was a fucking good one. Alrighty, guys, one other great episode of Ninja Comedy. That was actually a fucking amazing episode. Definitely way more action packed and a lot more actual progression going on in the past couple weeks of the past couple episodes. So that was a good fucking watch. Holy shit, bro. I mean, we got a lot that episode. I mean, we got like literally what their plans were, what they were trying to accomplish, and what they were going to go forth and do, which was, uh, as you can see, once. Um, they started getting attacked or shortly before that they were trying to hack into Alza systems to find out whatever other information they could and download it for themselves or put it on their own hard drive and, and make sure they had that information available to them and, and could keep it in safekeeping for, you know, exposing them in the future or whatever they needed to do. And I'm assuming also find the other locations of what Emma mentioned in the beginning of the episode, which was they were going to find the locations of different power plants render them useless while at the same time gaining the power from them to continue powering up Egon's suit and continuing their operations within the semi-truck since that's like basically her own little lab, right? Or really her fucking enormous lab. So that was the goal that they set out and were going to do in the beginning of the episode. And uh, we saw 
a lot of, I think, the fucking head dude of Alza, you know, uh, talking to other political figures. That one guy, again, that came to visit, like, last episode or two episodes ago, they were having a video call and disagreeing about something. He obviously has a kind of a high temper. He doesn't like these types of discussions. And he, I mean, he's definitely somebody who doesn't know how to take no for an answer and is used to being able to get away with whatever he gets away with. Like, he's just, you know, I mean, he's at the top of it all, right? He's at the top of this amazing company with this amazing technology that is spreading its influence throughout all places of the world and he's able to continue to do so thanks to the ninjas working for him and using them as muscle and forcing anybody that doesn't want their technology that technology in their country all right bet we'll just take you out and then we'll get somebody to replace you that i know and we'll fucking you know reverse things in the way that i want them and then boom i get what i want so he's very used to just getting what he wants all the fucking time so we saw that little conversation with him. We also saw him having a conversation with Yamaji and then, you know, kind of going back and forth and um, him not taking a threat, supposedly a threat from Yamaji very well. And the whole time it was really a hologram. He wasn't even actually there. They obviously don't see eye to eye on everything. And obviously he's ignorant because he doesn't know how ninjas are and they've only been working together for a short amount of time. So he passes by Reaper at one point, Reaper going to check on his suit, like the fucking, you know, uh, percentage that it's done at or being charged up or whatever, whenever it's ready, it was at like 92% or some shit. But on his way there, he passed by Zuckerberg looking motherfucker. And he basically said to him like, oh, how's your boss doing? If I was him, I would have already let you gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, cause like Yamaji has been holding Reaper back for a little bit, you know, or, or a good while actually. Um, we've only really seen Higan and him face off or be in front of each other once and that was in between those that that barrier and Reaper was about to kill him as well later that episode whenever they got up to the roof and we first got introduced to these mechs and shit but that's when Emma who was in one of those mechs saved him so we've only had really one or two encounters with Reaper from Higan's perspective even though they knew each other from the past and obviously that's like what's building up to be the like the fight of like the fucking show right so looks like that's heating up to be like maybe the climax of the season like at the end or maybe it, we get it sooner than we think like maybe they start fighting next episode or some shit i don't really know um but he's definitely you know he's finally gotten the okay from yamaji like last episode or some shit like okay i'm gonna I'm let you go like you can like settle this handle he gone take care of him kill him do do what you gotta do but obviously you know, fucking head dude of Alza was not really agreeing with the how long Yamaji like kept him at bay. You know what I'm saying? Like he would have ordered him to do so way sooner, according to him. So we see all that. Big D getting his fade, and he had the tracker on the truck, so he knew exactly where he had to go. He gets his fade, he go gets his suit that was all done. He goes to attack, as well as, you know, whatever mercenaries or, you know, soldiers that Alza had to their disposal with big d as well and emma and mike fucking went the fuck in and taking out the vast majority of the regular mercenaries as he was fighting big d and actually took him out amazing fight i mean i don't think there was anything too crazy going on with the animation or you know it wasn't really focused too much on just that fight in particular like it wasn't super crazy like he just got the best of him he's getting better at using the suit and uh stabbed him and that was a fatal blow and Big D was completely content with that. Like, he seems like a pretty honorable guy uh, and uh, was completely okay with dying like that. But of course, Zuckerberg fuck. Always have some sort of dirty trick up his sleeve. And it looks like he has these suits available to be able to you know, use how he wants and can make them blow the fuck up. And that's exactly what happened. And it literally looked like a mini nuke. Like, that explosion was huge. Big D used one of the centipedes to protect fucking Higan. Emma used her um, little mechs or robots that she had to her disposal to protect Mike. Jason was inside the car, protected by, you know, just being inside there. And then Emma was the only one that really took on the blast and couldn't, it couldn't, you know, ignore it. Like, she couldn't get away. And she knew what was about to happen. And she took it. And it, it, it was kind of symbolic because of, like, you could see how burned her body was through the clothing like all like all over her back and it's kind of symbolic because that's something of her past whenever she was a kid like that's what happened to her like she had like burns all over her face and that's what you know made her parents like give her give up on her and not want to have anything to do with her like it really hit home uh and that kind of symbolic relationship with what just happened to her 
And then obviously like the very emotional like conversation between, you know, Mike and Emma and her last words and how Mike kind of saw her as another chance at having, you know, a, his daughter, you know, something like that. You know, that's kind of how he saw that relationship since he had already lost his real daughter. Like, I mean, it's just sad, bro. It's really fucking sad and it sucks because I thought she died a couple episodes ago. That's what it was making it seem like in that one episode where she was leaving that message to Egon and, and his subconscious. And I thought, like, okay, she's fucking dead. And then we get into the next episode, and she's good. I'm like, oh, okay, bet. Awesome. But then they end up killing her off anyway this episode, which is just crazy. I mean, wild shit. So that, that, that tells me that Jason's going to be the one taking over you know, the lab or, you know, all the, like, hacking, scientific shit, technology stuff. Like, he's going to be the one handling that, getting them into the city, this and that. <clears throat> Mike just there along for the ride and being able to take out whatever regular mercenaries he can as he showed he's capable of this episode. I mean, they were, him and Emma were going in. Like, they were fucking sharp shooting out there, bro. So, all in all, a crazy climactic action-packed episode. That shit was insane. And so, they, they, and then also another point of, like, symbolism towards the end where he got, uh, burned emma's body and as he was walking away put his hood up just like he whenever he burned down his own house in the first episode at the end of that episode so a lot of a lot of good callbacks and, and amazing stuff this episode this was a really good one and we got 10 11 12 three more after this so i'm excited to see how this continues to play out and ends off for this first season hopefully this actual dope ass fight that i'm expecting between reaper and he got i feel like that's the hypest thing we can look forward to at this point um so yeah amazing stuff another amazing episode of ninja com we that's going to do it for me if you guys enjoyed it please like down below comment subscribe for new hit the notification bell see the next one's dropping i'll see you on the next one y'all be good deuces